I think I think it's I think it's it's healthy and it's very good for 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 it to be a battle. And I think that Derek's more than capable as well of um stepping up this stage. Um, he's been three years there now, where he's been sixteen and like any time I know Anna was injured and and missing there in the last two years, and when he stood up, he did very well. So, um, look at their 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 different goalies. Um, Derek is more like a, Derek's played an awful lot more outfield with with our dry and down through the years, so he probably understands a bit more in regards to the distribution that way. Um, like Ian is probably a bit more flexible and can go for stopping and stuff like that. Derek's puck is probably a bit longer. Um, they've both their own qualities, but I think it's it's right up there now for for discussion. I think that like give the both some opportunities over the next couple of games and let the best man win. Then I think and I think that Derek, but I do think Derek is more than capable of stepping in. The Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates and any other information, head to citylink.ie. Along to the Maroon and White Pod, I'm joined this week by Cahar Bombranock and Sir Farron to look back on Galway's comfortable victory, you could say, uh, over Antrim yesterday in Corrigan Park where they registered a total of 235, which is probably the biggest positive uh, to take out of yesterday. Sir, coming to you first... On yesterday, the trip up to Corrigan Park, not sure was it your first time up there, but what was that whole experience like? Yeah, I met the two boys at uh, half six. We left uh, the plaza. Uh, Sean Welch was driving and Niall Finnegan was navigating, really. And it's a good long trip up. We had a cup of tea on the way up. Like We left plenty of time and uh, just as well, really, because like we found that we went into the six counties, uh, a lot of the lines are in work and it, goes, it changes on the phone, the whole lot changes, whatever way, you know, I wouldn't have been to technology that much. But it was a good run out for Galway. Like, uh, Paul, they went up the evening before, stayed somewhere around outside Drogheda or some of the hotels, like, and kind of they used it because we got up there for the championship and even the very north before the game, you know, if the management measuring the, measuring the 265s and the lines in between because the pitch would be a lovely club pitch now, but it's a little bit sharp. But look, it was, it was nothing wrong with the pitch. The ground was actually very good. The kind of the surface was very good and, uh, like go, we played against. They were playing against the Breeze first time, but from the very first minute, they they got a goal. Like uh, Jason Flynn intercepted the pass from the full back back to the goal. He was taking like I don't think the full back knew he was there. He assumed all the fours and out the field, and he just kind of got in between them and tapped it down and tapped the ball into an empty net. And that set the tone for the whole day. And we were chasing him from there on. Yeah, just on that point, Carol, but Sir touches on there. How important is that for a goal to get the? run out in Corrigan Park yesterday given that they'll be I think it was 12 weeks on from this weekend they'll be there again in the championship uh, well I suppose it, it, it's a nice thing to be able to do I think that's the main thing and I suppose when you have the opportunity to kind of plan like that it's nice to do because you don't know like it is it is a journey it is different to other you know you're not going to Parnell Park you're not going to a county county ground it doesn't feel like a county ground as Cyril said it's a great club ground and the, and the great facilities but it is slightly different um, so I suppose it is good for lads just to, to mentally be tuned in. I know Henry, I think, referenced that, that, you know, lads were, were very much mentally tuned into the match. Um, um, I suppose it, you'd, you'd probably think that Antrim would be stronger come championship, but obviously Galway would, would probably be stronger as well. So I think I think they'd be happy that they've ticked that box and there'd be no questions when they're planning down for, for the Leinster Championship campaign. They'll know exactly when to go, what to do, you know, and they'll probably do the same thing, probably try, try it up the night four because it is... It is the journey, um, and as Cyril said, uh, it was cold. I don't think it's going to be as cold now coming down to the championship, but it's a, it's a box ticked, and um, I think they'll be happy enough that they've, they've, they've been able to do that. Just from seeing the pictures, uh, Cyril, yesterday, there, there's one photo with David Burke, and you can kind of see when he gets on the ball, as you can see a mountain behind him, but you can see a house and a stage as well. What's that kind of dynamic like it being there because I suppose it's just the surrounding area the Corrigan Park it's not something you get with every inter-county ground No like that's, that is the difference uh, Paul like you're you're surrounded by estates and that now look they're lovely people very very friendly people and uh, when I actually went there I knew I had been there before not on the ground was that some function on a Saturday, on a Saturday night before we played Antrim we played them in Caseman Park but it was something I, I knew they dressed them when I saw the, the set up but like uh it was nice to get the run out and it is a bit different. Like and the Antrim knew that you would be scoring see from outside, half backs midfield. They'd be all capable of scoring because the pitch is pretty short. Now maybe that's why they played the two uh, kind of very, very deep the first half, but they were never going to win because like the goal with fours at the moment, like Tom Allen is playing very well, picking his scores well, back to what he was. Connor Cooley, which is great. He's transferring his club form into his county form, which is great to see. It's lovely to see that. Uh Evan Island, look. 
he's 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 a treat to watch. Like there's a lot more to his game now than than just the free he's scoring him. But definitely when he gets if you give him the ball to score, like in a good setup, he'll do it. Uh, the Jason Flynn gets got his goals well. Like you know, he's kind of leading the attack up front. He's kind of laying off a lot of ball. And I suppose Connor Connor Whelan. What do you say about Connor in the sense that he's just not to me he's not fully fit yet. But then how could he be? He was away in Australia. And if he was as fit as the boys now, there'd be something wrong with the training. Though the player up front was Gavin Lee, hasn't fully got into the groove of, of the series. He's better than he's playing, I think that. But the forwards are good, like and again, you're kind of playing with five forwards, you know. Central feed the last yesterday was much stronger. Sean Alain mm-hmm. is busy and kind of bumping into everything and throwing himself around the place. And David Burke was reading the play. They were much stronger than than the, the midfield against Tipper. Area. It was interesting to see as well, Paul, yesterday. They tried out again. Adrian too is playing wing back, did nothing wrong. Uh, Dahi Burke was the other wing back, which is kind of an interesting experiment. But you'd have to say that uh, Keenan Fahey in goals or in, in Keenan centre back was very good. He's he's way better in the back, he's way better in the half back line in the forest. So he's more of a back altogether. Now, the full back line, hard to judge because Anthony would only wound up there most of the time. There was no pressure at all on the goal full back line, really. Like Quinton Burke did what he liked in the sense that there was no one, there was kind of three on one. Now that's kind of happening, there's nearly three on two in a lot of games, but three on one like it's, there's no one going to be three no matter how good you are. Carrick, Searles touched on a lot of the positives out of yesterday. But for you, what's the biggest positive coming away from Corrigan Park yesterday? I think the first thing to see David Burke back in a Galway jersey, that's massive. Like I think, Certainly touched on himself and Sean Lanan. Look, I think without David Burke midfield, you are missing one of the best hurlers we've had in a generation. That's a fact. Like, and he just does things at the right time. He's in the right place at the right time. And you could see him, and Cyril probably saw this yesterday. You can you can see him, especially in a small pitch like that. You can see him organizing, you can see him talking. You know, he's a leader. There's a reason why he was the captain and um, the last time we won the All Ireland. So I think David Burke being back in a goal jersey is is the biggest positive. I think Kim Fahey was was very good at centre back. Um and I think he probably has the athleticism as well to cover ground that you probably need against the top teams going forward. Um, and I think I, I looked at, I, I know it was Dahi Burke at seven, as Cyril said, and I think some, something that I found interesting was he was bombing forward a lot of the time. He might have got on the ball when he went forward, but he was an option a lot of the time. And I think that's probably something they probably would have worked on maybe yesterday, that, you know, like a Kyle Hayes or a Tim Burns, that Dahi, as we, we know he can do, like he scored in the championship last year, but to, to use them as an atta- attacking weapon as well, um, they were probably the two things. And the third thing, I think, um, is probably the way you could see the forwards were trying to use space, keep them very, very wide, um, and trying to, you, you could see they were working on things. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to happen straight away and the influence of Eamon O'Shea is not going to happen straight away, but you could see there was a method to go away yesterday. And I think you could see that from their how tuned in they were. Yes, they won the, the game easy, but you could see it probably wasn't about who they were against. It's about, it was about how they were going to play. And um, I think David Burke back, that's the, that's the biggest thing. You know, you, we can't emphasize enough how important that man is. Still, just on someone yesterday, your own club man, Jason Flynn, uh, he's probably been moved around a lot nearly in every position in the goal forward line. Started in the corner yesterday, uh, got 2-1. Uh, that's what he finished with. Is that the position where Galway get the most out of Jason this year? It's hard to know. Is he Jason last few years has been he's been the, the, the sub coming on, and as I was often saying to him, the last few years he was only coming on when Galway were losing. Like he wasn't being brought on when they were winning. He wasn't being picked. He wasn't being brought on if they were winning. They weren't bringing them on. And if they were losing, yes, he expected to change the game. Hard to do that every day, Paul, because some days you come on and you'll you'll get on the ball. Other days you won't. Jason to me, like he's a real distributor. He's mind you, a soccer player pinning the ball around. He's the best probably player there to pin the ball and he's the most unselfish player up front. At a matter of time, a lot of times, you may even advise him, listen, take your own shots at times because you're just spinning everything around. Like it's very north of Jason, Jim, Jamie Ryan came on yesterday and he pinned them straight away with a lovely ball. Did the same against uh, inside in the stadium. Like this, that's his thing. Like he pins a lot of ball. It's hard to know where, like with them all coming back, he's probably going to wind up in the full forward because he is, he is a big target man in there. Got the goal against Westmeath out there yesterday. Caught, got a, like the first goal would be kind of a, a, a terrible mistake, but yet he was there. But the second goal, like he got a nice pass from Conor Whelan, but he had a lot to do to, to get that goal. Now you could see, like, you can see what they're trying to do. They're giving the extra pass, and yesterday in the first half, especially, very nice, they were trying to give the extra, they weren't taking the easy points in the round, they were trying to walk the ball through for the killer goal. There's no doubt about it, like, they are hunting for goals. Now, they're getting the goals against the lesser teams, they haven't got them against the, the stronger teams, but after saying that, to be fair to them, yesterday was, was the strongest team I would think that they've picked. 
uh, like so far this year, like, and uh, they might be laying down the mark for the championship. Now, the only thing is that you wouldn't know Antrim. I can't see Antrim being as feeble in the championship. There was no, there was no championship feel about it, and they weren't kind of, they weren't really cutting into it. Like you can't expect them. Like Galway threw around the ball, kind of did a release. The backs were kind of loud. There was only three or four forwards up there, so the backs went to kind of short little book out, kind of walked away through, take it nice and steady coming through the lines. That won't work against the better teams. But even the day, the next day against Dublin. Slightly different in the sense that Dublin would have pace and they'll, they will go at them. So it'll be interesting how we get on. But like, it's a strong team. And like, uh, you know, as you referred there to David Bork, it's great to see him back. He knows how to do it. It was interesting to see uh, Adrian Tui back as well because he hasn't played for God for a long time. Mm. You know, so I don't know when his last championship game was. It's a, I'd say it was a few years ago, really, you know. Just on Jason Searle, because you've obviously worked with him really close at club level. Is he unfairly criticised, do you feel, when it comes to his performances in the Gold jersey? Oh, well, like, you see, this is the thing, like, he's he's a scapegoat every day. Like, when he's been picked, he's been taken off. Other lads are playing just as bad and weren't being taken off. Now, that can happen. And, you see, you're expecting so much. His standards are high. Like, you know, he has a, he has more probably hurling in one finger than a lot of them have in 10. But it's just to get it out. But the only way you get a player really playing with confidence is giving them the game time and not taking them off. Because if you start taking lads off the whole time, they're kind of maybe looking over the shoulder. And if you're leaving the lad as a sub, it's hard to do that. See, himself and Niall Burke came on and they didn't start that iron fine. But when you look back at the tape, they had a terrible to do with winning. They got four points and playing a couple mm-hmm. of free. You know, that doesn't happen every day, but you're, like it's 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 a 20 man game now. And even yesterday, it was noticeable. Uh, we wound up in the end, we had used all our subs, we wound up in the end with 13 players against 15. Now, it just shows you like that, even and it didn't matter yesterday, but it just shows you have to be careful. You can't put them all on because if you do, you're dice. And if some lads, now, the, there didn't seem to be that bad of injuries, like they came off with kind of pull muscles, but I suppose they were trying to be cautionary as well, didn't want to kind of uh, do any further injury. But it just shows what can happen where the five subs you with, and the next thing you're down to 14, and then you're down to 13, you know. So, like, it wouldn't want to happen in the championship, but it wouldn't, I'd say, like, to be more on the ball. But like it's, it's a big year for Jason. He's around a long time. I would love to see him making the breakthrough. Like he has so much hurling in him, but like he has he has suffered from from being kind of switched around and taken off. And again, like he's been moved around the whole time. But he is a dangerous player. No, you have good players to come back in. Uh, you know, you have Cahill Mannion who'll be on any team if he's right. You have Joseph Coney who'll be on any team if he's right. And you have uh, Brian Cocannon who'll probably be on, on any team as well if he's right. But they like you're going to get injuries. I think no matter no matter what six to play up front. Now, the, the usual, I say six, they're usually using six up there because they keep playing, you know, maybe five. But the, the, the fours and going, no matter what co- combination they do, they're good enough to win. And you have Declan De- 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 McLaughlin come back into that as well, playing very well until he got injured with a broken drum. But they'll score enough. It's from midfield back that we have to get right. Backs look solid yesterday. We do lack pace. There's no doubt about that. Like They're fit, but the pace... The, we at speed anyway, like, and that's that's the thing where we can maybe cut out in my in the bigger matches. But look at you have what you have. The one little disappointing thing is when you look through the team now, like the way it's shaping, I don't see any new names. I don't see any of the under twenty ones or the better younger lads coming through on the team at the moment. Now maybe they will, but there's only two more league games left, so you're getting down to the nitty gritty. Now we have the first round against Carlo, which again. You know, you, you you probably have two or three tough matches in the championship. You'd have Kilkenny at home, at home, Wexford away. Dublin will be tricky. They're the three that are tricky. But I, like that would be disappointing a bit to me that there's no young that kind of uh, on the team. Uh, the way it looks now. Is that this point of view, Carol? Because if you're looking at that team yesterday, it's only really Gavin Lee. Yeah, I suppose Declan Lachlan, obviously with his yeah. injury, you know, Liam Collins... Didn't go on yesterday, I don't think. Um, and they're two, you know, they're two that they would have played championship last year. Do you know what I mean? Um, it, it is probably disappointing, but I suppose you can't put them in if they're not playing better than the other lads. Do you know what I mean? And and especially up front, we probably have the options at the back. Like I know Kim Kim Mahoney came on yesterday. You know, after after playing well for Saint Thomas's, he's going to need a test at some stage. You know, you have to test these a player like that, but not not as much. Senior um, experience, you have to test them out. It is disappointing, but I suppose that's where we are. And I think they've, they they have tried a lot of players, but there's no one really that put their hand up. And you even saw that in some of the Walsh Cup games. There was no one really that put their hand up. And even in the in the Wexford final, and um, the Walsh Cup final, you know there was there was a lot of lads you'd probably be disappointed with. So it probably is disappointing that we're back to the same thirteen or fifth, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen players, but changes them around. But 
suppose that's where we are, you know, and I think Cyril touched on there the, the lack of speed, like we saw that in in Turles against Tip, you know, even Mark Cole came on and he ran through ran through down the centre a lot. Maybe that's the reason why Keenan Fahey is there to kind of be a bit more mobile. Um but I do think it'll be interesting how will they stick with Finton at three and Keenan at six. And I suppose the test will come against probably Limerick, you know, that's that'll be where the, the, they really will find out where lads are at. That doesn't mean that Limerick will be at full tilt where they won't, but we need to kind of have that the backs is really where we'd be worried about. We have enough forwards, as Cyril said. Probably the hardest thing with the forwards is to see who, what five or what six start, you know, because we have so many of them. Will we see Joseph Cooney back in the backs again? Um, and it is this point that we don't have anybody really. You couldn't say in the last two years that somebody has really put their hand up. They've done it in, in, in fits and starts. You know, Jeff McLaughlin got his point down in Nolan Park last year. You know, Liam Collins came on the All Ireland final, but they haven't really made that next jump. But maybe, maybe it's just too early for them. You know, both lads, both of them probably wouldn't have the same physicality and SNC work done yet. Um, but then you look at, at Limerick and you have, you know, John Kiley referenced, you know, your Adam Englishes and your Carl O'Neills and your Fergal O'Connors this week. And he said, you know, they're on the panel three years now. Do you know? So maybe it is that kind of third year that they really need to to, to take off. But I suppose with Gavin, uh, he, he, did, he did grand yesterday. He did a lot of good things, but. He probably wasn't in the game as much um, as all the other forwards. Um, but I'm glad he's getting game time because that's what he needs. And you kind of need to stick with the likes of Gavin Lee and give him as much exposure against Dublin now and against Limerick as well because we know what a lot of the rest of the lads can do. Um, but it's trying to add that. And, and look, we need we need people off the bench. You know, that's the thing. We need lads coming in. But it is at the backs that we, we, we are still... We're, we're moving things around um, to try and cover, cover, cover spots. But that's not really any good when we get to the big games hopefully in the summer. Just on three and six, uh, you touched on there. We were having the debate last week on the podcast and it nearly feels like every week we're having the debate of whose goal is three and six is going to be. Yesterday was Finton and Keenan. Just before I bring Searle in on this, Carol, who is three and six for you for this year? Ooh, um I was impressed with Keenan yesterday at six, but I don't think we've seen enough of him yet. So I, I kind of, I plead the fifth there now <laughs> to say we have to see him. But like, you have to find out, you know, you have to find out. And I do think then, if you do have Finton and Dye in the team, you can mix a match. You know what I mean? Like, you do have to be able to say, right, you know, like last year, Aaron Glan got the goal on, on, on Dahi, I think he was in a, in a three. You do have to be flexible. So I don't think it's as easy as to have three and six all the time, especially at three, especially the way certain teams play. You know, Limerick are the champions. They're the team we will have to beat if we're going to win the All Ireland. So I do think you need to be flexible. But if you were to ask me who would I start number three now, I'd probably put Dahi back there. But you could see yesterday that's probably not the plan with with management that they want to use Dahi in a different way. Um, but I think if you're going to have Keenan five six, you got to got to got to stick with him now. And um, you know, hopefully he'll get a test uh, because he didn't get a test yesterday. As Cyril touched on, you know, they had Joseph McLaughlin up up front in his own, like he's still in school. Um, you know, Colin Cunning wasn't really great yesterday. Um, so a lot of the Antrim forwards were kind of were filtering back. So Galway had so much time. It was it was like Farouk Mannion had so much time in the ball. Sometimes he he could literally take a touch and look up twice. You know, it was it was it wasn't really reflective of where how how, how much of a test we'll get. Um, so we're we're someplace between the Antrim game and the tip tip game. You know, but there's there's questions to be asked still who who the best three is. But I probably I probably put Dahi back. Do you see them sticking with Keenan at six, sir, and uh, Finton at three? Yeah. Well, I've been, I've been advocating Keenan for six or in the half back line for the last two or three years. I make no secret of it. Like, I've seen him playing a lot of stuff for Ardran and a lot of stuff for the college, and he's a right good hurler. And, like, he, he, he's, he could be, in a year's time, he could be an all star at number six. But, like, uh, going, like then, like, Dahi, Finton Buck can be on most teams. There's no doubt about Dahi is, is happier. To me, he looks more in the middle. He's hemmed in, you know what I mean? Like the pace thing is going, but look, you could play him anywhere. But they're definitely, it is definitely in their head. Like, you know, Finton, like, uh, you know, the pull back. He got caught against, uh, against what they call Marcho Welch there, was it last year before? Like a bit of pain. See, when the backs are torn, they're going to get, any good back is going to get torn, but he's after having a break on pain. They 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 want them all on the team is to fit them in and like to fit them in the best thing. Like Parik Man, you know, at the moment is playing back, corner back, but Maybe he's not a real corner back at all. No, he he has see when he's in there at the moment he's not really marking because there's no one to mark and he's kind of sweeping which is lovely. But to me he's still a better wing back like you know and the he could still wind up in in the in the in the in the half back line. And going back to Gavin Lee like Gavin is a lovely hurler like there's no he lovely touches but notice even with UCG when the going got kind of hot 
he wasn't in it. You had to make a kind of step up to that. That midfield still isn't right because you're going to, like, Cahill Manic will come back in midfield as well. Like, it's, you know, they have a lot of, if they get everyone fit, they have options there. They have options at the back too. It's just that the team is nearly going to look the same. Now, look, maybe it is good enough to win looking the same, but it's nearly the same team that was beaten. You know, that kind of way you need. Now, as you know, as Carol there reverted, the others haven't stepped up, but I think Young Shockness, he could make a great corner back in time. He's a good horror, he's a good, very good back. I'm very keen on, on Daniel Loftus. I think he's very, very good. But they're not they're not maybe getting the chances, but they had a very good campaign with, with UCG. They might yet like these guys won't let you down now. They're young. And like there's a few when I say young, it wouldn't be the, the, there's still a future in them, like, you know, and uh, you have to it's okay, this team, and I know the lads are trying to win the All-Ireland, and to me, they should win at least the Leinster title. That would be the least they should be winning. They didn't have that against Siobhan, but you nearly want to be, they'd want to be kind of planning a little bit down the road too, because I can see, even within the All-Ireland, this are winning a lot of these lads are kind of on their, la- like, they're at the end of their of their careers, not at the beginning, and you could have a lot, lot of, you could have a big, kind of, uh, what would you say, gaps to fit next year if you don't have kind of a few of them or lads in around there. They had a few lads go off the panel. I was surprised to see young, uh, when air going off the panel, I was very surprised to see your hand going off the panel. I thought he was he was good enough, like to be, you know, and I played very well. I thought if it's given good hurler for turn up more, uh, Alice Conair is kind of a future midfielder, like and you know, he played in he stood in corner forward. Now, young McLaughlin is unlucky, he was making yeah. a, like a break and broke his thumb in that match. He still will be there. He was a loss to Mary Eye as well, like, and he's another forward, like, so. Maybe if some of them could wind up in the, you know, going back to field, they probably won't do that. But a lot of counties are doing that now. Like Kyle Hayes started up front and now he's, you know, he's, he's wing back. Uh, so did Garrett uh, Hegarty started wing back. Now he's wing forward. They're like these guys could play anywhere. You know, it's, it's a matter of, it's really to get the strongest team out and get, get the best hurlers, which, and to get the most mobile, to have a bit of speed in it. Like I see young Bo now for tip, he's been tried wing back or wing, yeah, and he played all his hurling in the forwards, like, you know, which, which is kind of the modern way of doing things as well, really. But we have as good a panel as anyone, like, you know, and if we can get it right on the day, like, we'd be very, very hard to beat. But it'd be interesting to see how we get on against the the, so, the so-called better teams. I would produce nice, we still scored 24 points against Tip Hall. It was a lot yeah. of score, not much ball going in, really, like, the, the Forest team did well. So, like, uh, it'd be interesting how, how the Dublin game goes, and I'm really looking forward to the Limerick game. The only uh, cravat to that is that if Limerick are true, which there will be probably. You don't know what kind of a team they're going to put out. You know what I mean? They're at home, they'd like to win. But you'll probably find that they'll be having a lot of the new guys out that night just to let them get a big taste of the of the real stuff. Carol, as Sarah touches there on the panel we have at the moment, depth-wise, you would have to say, this is definitely the strongest panel we've had under Shefflin, and it's probably the strongest panel we have had in quite a few years. Even when he's listing some of those names like some of those players didn't even make the twenty six yesterday. Hmm. I, I yeah, we, we definitely have, but we have a lot of players around the same level. Um and I think that's that's the difficulty is trying to get our best players on the pitch and not everyone, you know, especially from, from nine back, you know, even even at number one, like is it gonna be Dara Fahi? Is it gonna be Ana Murphy? Uh, we don't know who's gonna be one, we don't know who's gonna be three. We're not hundred percent sure who's going to be six. So we do have a lot of players, but we're probably a lot of players at the same level, you know. Um, so that that's the one thing I would say. Like we we know Galway has an an amount of hurlers. Like there's there's an amount of lads, but it's trying to get the best lads from one to fifteen, and then trying to get them playing well. Um, and we have hurlers. It's probably athletes or, or speed that we are lacking. And, and I know myself and Zero are, are saying the same thing that it's speed that is the big the big problem. Um, and speed won't be cut out as much this time of year but when we get to, to Crow Park in, in July that's when you need to be so um, yeah definitely we have a great panel but you know we need we need to make sure that we have enough enough lads on our teams um, I think with Dara Fahey and Ana Murphy I think it, it is an interesting one um, I would be surprised now if they change from Dara um, like he's, he's played you know the first three league games um, like he, he didn't have much to do yesterday to be honest um, but you know when you're when you're looking at building your defence you need to have your, your goalie in situ. So I'd be surprised if they went away from dark. But then, you know, Ian Murphy did nothing wrong for the last couple of years and he was probably only finding his feet as an inter-county goalie this, uh, last yeah. year. So it, it is a, it's an interesting one. Yeah, it's funny to say that. Like, it's interesting. I know I'm from his club. Like, we were kind of wondering what he has done wrong. Mm. 
He's been nominated for All Stars, and even looking at the team, like uh-huh. we're talking about full back and Fintan Buck is a good one, but we have an All Star, a, a double, triple, quadruple All Star full back, and we're not playing him. Like if these things work out, it's fine, but if they don't, there'll be big questions asked. Like mm-hmm. you know, there's the question because like uh, they're fiddling around. You have two goalies that are that are good, but like uh, you know, you have one that was in situ, and now he's not playing at all. So we don't know. And like you have a number no number five or number seven to say wing back wherever it is die. That's a good full back. Now he's wing back. So you know, you have you have you have Fahey says centre back, and I think he's very good in it. He's they had him wing four. So like if it doesn't work, there will be hard questions. There's no there's no questions being asked at all. Now everything is lovely in the sense we won the last day, they didn't get any criticism after the tip match. Even last year getting caught back in Kenny, like you know, like Henry is kind of in a sense he's been given a free run. Now he's brought in Eamon O'Shea, which is a great idea, like because it's a new voice anyway. But like uh, there will be questions asked if this team doesn't succeed, because like uh, you can't be pussy putting the whole time, you know. And uh, they've got a nice run, like uh, and, you know there isn't much pressure. You look at the other managers when they lose a game, they've been pillared left, right, and centre. We we're not doing that in God, which is which is the right thing. But like if if you don't succeed, like if you keep doing the same thing. And and keep and not winning, and you keep doing the same thing. You'll probably want to get the same results. So, if, like this is a very very big year. That's why I hope to go bald headed for at least a Leinster title and win it. Not be kind of saying where we can gain the back door. You know, we need to win that Leinster title. And so strictly speaking, you know, there's only two teams to beat. Maybe Wexford a little bit and Kilkenny or or Pendle. They're they're very hard for us to beat. But like we're well, we should have won that last year. There's no doubt about that. And like uh, we're well capable of beating. Once we get our act together, and that's. That's what I'd be hoping that they do, you know, that they do get their act together. Like, they're, you know, it's we've been let off the hook. We got hammered in a Welsh Cup final without mm. the week team, I think, of the year. I couldn't believe the team he put out. If he did it the other way around. But, like, that was the Welsh Cup final, you know. Go out against Tip, like, a fairly good team. Like, we put out the strongest team last Sunday against Antrim. Why not put out the strongest team against Tip? Like, a... Uh, it's it's just you know you you did want to be just getting you know their heads together. They're three years there now, so it's it's squeaky bum time as far as I'm concerned. I think Cyril is right there. Like we have to win a Leinster title. There's absolutely no way you know it, 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 we're not go, we're going nowhere if we're, if we don't win a Leinster title. And you know we should have won it last year. And if you win Leinster, you know it, it, it you're obviously straight into the Leinster final. But like the momentum that gets you know lads start believed and whereas you know last year we were lucky to get over the line against Tipperary, a poor Tipperary team last year. In the end, you know, we missed a lot of chances. It was a poor game. Um, and, uh, you know, you might argue, OK, we played well for the first half against Limerick, but we got beaten, well beaten in the end. You know, so you have to be winning Leinster, uh, Leinster title. And when was the last time we won a Leinster title? It's a good, it's a good while back, you know. Um, and, and as Cyril, we, we've lost against Kilkenny in three, three, four, three finals, four finals since we were back there, since we won it. So um, I do think, that, and I think a point Cyril made earlier on about this team, a lot of these lads, and maybe that's why, you know, the likes of David, David Burke has come back. This is probably their last chance, you know. Um, there's a lot of them lads with a lot of a lot of mileage on the clock. There will be a time that there will be a change in the guard. So this is it probably for the, for, for a lot of these lads. Um, but the thing is, they do have the hurling. They do have the talent. They have everything you need. But we need to make sure now that we're we're getting momentum. Like the year we won the All-Ireland, you know, if you remember, we went down to, to the Gaelic Crowns and bet to prayer in the league final. We're talking about yeah. Jason Flynn. I think he got two goals that day, and everything came from there. Do you know? We like everything was the momentum was there. I don't think we lost a game after that. It's very hard to win a championship if you're kind of stuttering and starting, and you know, well, we didn't have this player, we didn't have that player, and we're working on this. I think maybe yesterday from the team they picked was probably a sign of they probably understand that they do need now to win nearly every game from now on. Okay, that might be enough now to get to the league semi final, but if you beat Dublin and beat Limerick. Then you're into the championship with 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 a much solid with a much better standing, you know. If you if you if you beat Dublin and lost to Limerick, then you're under pressure. And think back, we talked about the Leinster final. We were what 14 points down against Dublin in the last game in Leinster last year in Co Park, um, and only for Joseph Joseph Cooney had an unbelievable second half. We could have been bet out the door. So, you know, we did, I think Sarah is right that there is a lot of questions to be answered with this team. We hope to answer them, but it has to be now. We can't be waiting for. You know the next game or the back door or quarterfinals. Go always be looking at the Leinster Champions saying we need to win every single game in this. And then you, you, then if you do that, you're in an All Ireland semi final and you have a great chance. Yeah, I, I firmly believe that if we got a role and won the Leinster title, 
we, you don't know where we're going to end up. This team would improve and once we start winning, the role would come. Like, but we need to get that win. Like the league, I'd say, has kind of gone at this stage. I don't know when we qualify for a semi final, you know, like by losing to Tip, it already put us under, you know, Tip probably go on and win their match as well. And Tip have made it quite clear, uh, you know, talking, talking to, you know, they've made it quite clear that they're, they want to win a league title. If they're able to win it, they're going for it. Like, I think we're out, I don't know, maybe, maybe hypothetically we're not, but like, the way it's looking, We'll hardly qualify for a semi final spot. Now we will. We should be beating Dublin and have a cut at Limerick as well, like down there and even beating them. But like we might, but it'd be lovely to win it. But even if we didn't win that, the big thing is to win a Leinster title. I think if we won that, we'd be on a roll because you're meeting the runners up in Munster, but isn't alone that you're meeting the team that has been kind of has been beaten. Okay, someone's going to win again, but like you're in a better position and the confidence comes from that. Like and this Galway team could. It, it grows, but as you refer to there, we're kind of stuttering and starting, and like we haven't put we haven't put four or five games together. This this is the big problem. We are getting the goals against the lesser teams. We're not getting them against the top teams. So we have to kind of we have to take the next step, and it's in them. And like you know, as Carl referred to there, like it's 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 kind of it could be the last for these for a lot of these generation of this of this squad now. A lot of these are underway. They're they're at the end of their careers, not at the beginning of them really. Just on this. We talk, Carrick, that we're trying different things. Is this experimentation not the perfect time to, I suppose, try all of this in the league? Yeah, I think there, well, there's a balance to it. I think definitely the Tipperary game, we probably didn't think that Tipperary were going to be as mad for the game. If you think back that Tipperary, Lee McCall, they played Dublin in Parnell Park. And I think in the interview afterwards, he referenced the Galway match four times. So I think we probably we probably knew that Tip were really you know going for revenge. And look, that's that's fair enough. Tip Tip had enough to deal with from last year. But I think with Galway, I think you know experimenting is one thing, but when you're trying to change positions and train lads after in year three, um, I think you know we we, we did a lot of experimenting last year, and you know we were lucky. We we're poor against Wexford in the first in in in, in the home game. We we're poor against Dublin. We kind of. If you look back, we were lucky to get into a Leinster final, really. Do you know? Like we didn't play we would play well in patches against Kenny Nolan Park. So like I think I I would have thought this year in year three that the experimenting would have nearly been gone and that we've been settled in on, on a team. Um so I think that's why I keep going back to the team, the strong team they, they they picked yesterday. I think probably that's a a marker that the management team probably understand now that we need to we need to keep you know the, the 12, 13 of these lads are probably yeah. going to be starting their championship team. I, I think you have to get that for, for Dublin and Limerick now because you can't go around changing, changing you know, lads in the backs and forwards and changing dynamics, you know, because there's a lot of these lads that are in different positions, fair enough, but it's year three, do you know, we need to be, we need to know, like you don't go out in Limerick, look at Limerick, I know they're, we're, we're talking about, but they're the barometer. You don't wonder about 10 lads or, or four or five lads on the Limerick team. You have an idea of the, of the 12, 13, unless there's an injury, you know, the one or two might be in the mix. Whereas Galway, could you pick the could you pick the Galway team for 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 championship match at the moment? You could pick a lot of the players, but you wouldn't know where they're playing. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's a, it's a good point. In fairness, there just uh, I suppose Galway's makeup up there is starting fifteen. Cyril, just kind of going back to yesterday a bit, obviously. Galway's first half performance going in winning by nine points at half time that really put the game to bed but is one of the big positives you mentioned Tom Monaghan Tom Monaghan at 11 is he just this kind of I suppose perfect solution because every six likes to drop off but does Tom Monaghan I suppose give certain sixes a lot to think about just with his constant movement and I suppose getting into those pockets he loves to get into yeah, he's first of all a great hurler and he's great forager for the ball. Very, very good on the left or right, mainly left as well, but he's good both sides. And you're you hit the nail in the head there, Paul. Like what's happening is the six are, are going back into the pocket. Now Tom isn't going in there, he's going out kind of more or less midfield. So he's well capable when he gets the ball around midfield, say forty five to sixty yards out, he's capable of popping him over the bar, which is lovely. Now you have Connor Cooney playing as well on say on his left, or right, left really yesterday. And like if you give him the ball, he's the like the wrist he has, he'll float like he's once he's if he gets to him at all, gets his few points every day. They're they're working very well. Now Gavin Lee is with them in the yesterday and a half hour, then nice order, but just not now maybe he's he's still very young, of course. And inside, like you have the boys inside that are 
are dangerous no matter what way to pick them like you know Nyland is in there but he goes out as well he kind of comes out where Gavin Lee is because he, he loves to pick up ball but if he picks it up he'll score it so will Jason Flynn if he picks it up even though he first to pass it really and like Conor Whelan is Conor Whelan he'd be on any team plus they have other lads coming in like and they have a good set like it's it's going to be hard to make the forwards if everyone is fit <laughs> it, it's, it's not as hard to make the backs that's you know but like but that's that's they have to get that right like but definitely like the third year it should be settling now like they shouldn't be fiddling around too much because like it's their third year in like and you know you can't keep changing that they, they know what would, they have. Uh, would Sean Lennon and David Burke be your midfield now sir to stick with that I, I don't know really if Kyle Manning came back very fit you'd have okay, to yeah. Yeah. Well, you know I mean you, you just have to have him uh, you know Joseph Cooney if he's back fit yeah. to me he'd be beyond anyone's team whether he's going to try mid, midfield or in the half back line I, you know I don't know like you He's supposed to be back in training. But these boys haven't trained much. Now, Brian Concannon, the same. They have, they have missed the block of training. Mm. You know, it's, it's it's interesting. I was talking to John Kiley there two weeks ago at a function in Limerick, and I was saying, you know, just chatting about the training. He said they had their seven-week block done. And I just said, well, had you everyone? And he said, oh, yeah. He said there was no one missing. Like, they had everyone free. There was no injury, like, which is a big plus like, to have the block done. And he's very much afraid of the first match against uh, Clare and Innes because he said, like, the Clare played very well against him. He said, and last year they, they actually beat him. Then they're wary of what happened last year, winning the league and nearly getting caught in Munster. So I would think they'll be, they'll want to qualify in the league and well and good if it comes. But they're really, I'd say, gauging for the Munster title. Because when I was said and done, we look back at last year, Paul, they nearly got caught in Munster. It wasn't in Crow Park that they got. Mm. They actually. Lozenge in Crow Park, but back down and say, you know, at home or in Innes, you know, a tourist was touch and go that they got through it all. Just on, on Paul was at still talk about Joseph Cooney. Like, I think he's probably the most underrated hurler in Ireland. Um, he's just unbelievable. A player you can play anywhere, but I think it will be a big decision where will they play him? Um, you know, will he will they put back, will he go back, going back? The only thing I, I like about him when he's in the forwards is that he's a ball winner. And, you know, and when the ties started to turn last year against Limerick, it was the Limerick half back line when we went had to go long, ball after ball after ball was coming down in in, in Limerick hands. So I do think that is probably the one thing we don't have in the forward moment is a natural, you know, a go to ball, someone that they can put up their hand and, and and get a ball when we badly need it. So it will be interesting to see where they put Joseph because he's such an unbelievable hurler, so an unbelievable athlete. Um, like he he can play anywhere, but it, we need him. We need him to be playing well. So it'll be interesting when they put him. Back half back or in the half forward line, but I, I just think he's just the most underrated hurler. You know, does the, every year he plays well for Galway. Every game he plays well for Galway, and no one ever talks about him how, how good he is outside of Galway, especially. You know, um. So I just think he's, he's unbelievable, and he's a, an unbelievable servant as well. Like he's he's missed, he's rarely missed too many games for for Galway. So it'll be interesting where they where they place him because we don't have that that go to ball. You know that 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 Johnny Glynn ball. You know from a couple of years ago that when we have to go long. That someone can win it or even win breaks off him, you know. That's probably the only thing we don't have natural in that half forward line. Save, especially when you have come on in eleven, who I think was brilliant. I think he's going to be brilliant, you know, getting around and getting on ball and using his speed. But it's just that who's going to win a ball when you badly need it if we're against Hayes, Hannon, and Burns again. Yeah, I suppose really it's a thing that's a weakness in Galway Holland at the moment for the last few years and in the air. We're not good in the air in general. Like that's kind of, you know, not not blaming anyone, but those, it's a kind of a thing that we should be focusing a little bit more on, on practicing anyway. Because like uh, the likes of Tommy Welsh wasn't big and he was great in the air. Like there's not to stop us being good in the air. It's, it's a kind of a weakness in Galway Holland in general, I would think. Is one positive that we haven't touched on yet, Jamie Ryan? Uh, yesterday again, two points. But even his impact, like if he isn't a start, is Jamie Ryan this player that can, I suppose, be your finisher in the last 20 minutes? Yeah, well, the thing is, first of all, he has great hurling and he's great pace. He has the one thing that you really need is pace, and he has the hurling. Now, he's been very unlucky in the last few years and warming up in Bandeslaw this year, he, he got injured. But then when you look back at it, some of the lads that were injured are on because they weren't playing. It's funny. You have lads playing every day and they could be actually playing. If they're not playing well, Paul, they're actually playing themselves off. But that's the way it goes. He's a good impact sub. There's no doubt about that because he's, he's an eye for a score. He'll go for a score the whole time. That's that's his game. They're trying him inside and, you know, inside or wing forward, he'll pop around. He's, he's a, he has an engine. And uh, 
like he, he's around a while, but he has he has no he's very little on the clock county wise anyway. Like he'd be full of vim, like and it's a big year for him now. Like and he will be you know he'll be on the panel, he'll be on that twenty six. I'd say like and he will be one that's used if they're looking for, definitely if they're looking for a score. He'll be one that's used now. If they're trying to hold on, maybe it's a different thing. But like definitely he he likes scoring and he's he's good at it. Great has great great campaign for Lockray. And look, he's to be gone. Like when they really need him, which can which is tough look. But like he's back again now and. Looking at him, he's 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 busy and he looks he looks like he is good, like and he he's, he deserves a kind of a break. But I I think they will use him this year definitely. Do you see him similar to that role, Dan? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I don't think I can't see him breaking on, onto the starting team, um, but I do think he can be an impact, impact player. And I think what Cyril does, he's a, he's a bit older than your your and physically than Jackie McLaughlin and, and Liam Collins. Do you know that he, he's a bit. Bulk here as well, um, and he's aggressive. Do you know, like he 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 will take on his man, um, and you know we only saw a small bit of him yesterday, but like he got a great point from the sideline, um, and that's all you can do when you're coming off. If you're coming off the bench, you just need to impact. You need to get a score or two, and if you're getting someone coming on for ten minutes, getting two points, well, that's that that's that's the job done. You know, and that's you know we talk about Jason Flynn and Niall Burke. That's what ultimately won in 2017 is is scores off the bench. We can have bring everyone on, uh, off the bench, but you need impact. You need to have something to show for it on the scoreboard. Just on Galway's scores yesterday, and um, just for anyone who wasn't at the game, uh, Evan Nyland, 13 points, 10 frees. Jason Flynn, 2-1. Tom Mullen, 6 points. Connor Cooney, 4 points. Sean Lennon, 3 points. Uh, and then a point each by Keenan Fahey. Uh, well, Keenan Fahey, uh, Connor Whelan, Jamie Ryan, 2 points each there, sorry. And then uh, Gavin Lee and John Cooney, a point each. Cyril, just coming away uh, from this game for the players, obviously, as we've mentioned, good to get the run out in Corrigan Park, but is this valuable or do we learn anything from yesterday, really? It's still valuable, like, because after being disappointed against Tipperary. Now, you have to remember when you look at the tip match say, on the tape, it was the start of both halves of a really out hurled, and we were out hurled, but after that team, we did quite well. And we got into the game. But look, at they're back in the groove again. It's a nice win. They're training away hard. They kind of use the weekend. They went up on a Saturday evening, like, and they'd be happy because it's a long old trip home. But they'll be much kind of a be bitter, kind of bitter jizz in the in the camp this week. Like, see, all the Fitzgibbon boys are back. And be fair to Henry and the lads, they would have suffered. When I say suffered, they'd have a lot more playing Fitzgibbon between Galway, UL, and Mary Ibe. A lot of Galway lads were kind of all over the shop. Now they're all in. And now they're real fighting for 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 places on the panel begins. And if you get injured, it's a tough look. There's someone else there, probably probably a different name, but just as good. So I think they'll be they'll be in good form, and they'll they'll treat the double match serious because that's a that's a a free runner of of the championship game coming up. But I would like Dublin were hammered the other night, but they still cause plenty of trouble to Limerick with the pace. Now I would think the same thing will happen in 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 in, in Pierce Stadium that they'll go out as a Michal. I don't know. No, the boys, he won't want to get a. He won't want to get a. a he'll try his best to, to beat Galway. He knows inside out that won't really help him. Galway would, would have more natural hurlers like to Dublin. When you say to Dublin, you'd often kind of say they're kind of manufactured and they, they take offence to that. But to me, they're still they're they are that bit manufactured. They are improving, but they're not up to that level, I think yet. But they could still cause a shock in the championship because I see Chris Crummy is coming back. You know, there's a few guys going back. Bork is back. Now they played just the, the weekend, but another week under the belt or two weeks under the belt. They will improve, and you'll find you'll find that they'll be the strongest against Galway with the next day compared to the compared to the games that they've played already. It's ten to merge that Dublin game. Um, yeah, Dublin took a fair trimming to Limerick over the weekend, three thirty to one eighteen. But Carrick, you actually referenced last year, and even going back to last few years, a record against Dublin at the minute is an outstanding. So, like we, I know they took a hammer and everything, but like we can't take them for granted either. No, and I think like it was a strange game to be honest on Saturday because, like obviously Limerick had a goal after thirteen seconds, and in fairness to Dublin, against a very very strong Limerick team, which which John Kelly selected, you, you know they didn't they didn't they didn't give up like they brought it back to a point, and you know at thirty minutes you were saying just they're, they're doing well, but they probably just you know the, the mistakes that Dublin made like Dara Gray threw up the ball, a silly hand pass, and and Limerick punished them, um, but it was a strange game, you know Crow Park in front of couple of thousand people is a strange place to play a game like that as well before a football match um, and look Limerick just ran rings around them in the second half but one thing I would say is Dublin caused, caused them problems like they created four goals chances only took one of them um, but like Nicky Quaid made a great save and like yeah. as you said like we do have a bad record against Dublin I think like sometimes 
it's I mean, when we play Dublin, we expect to win, but we probably aren't giving them the respect that that they deserve based on the results. If that makes sense, um, you know, like we either we either cruise against them or we find it hard. But like I think last year with the reference in Crow Park, like Dublin should have bet us. That's that's like they, they should have been they should have won that game last year, and we were so poor in the first half. So I would think that Galway, like it'll be it'll be an interesting one for Galway. Will the will, mentally will they be tuned into that game now against Dublin? You know, you want to lay a marker against a team you're going to play in the championship at home, Pierce Stadium, especially after last year's performance. And um, so I do think Galway will, will lay a marker down in that game. Um, and as Cyril said, you know, Donald Burke was back. Um, Chris Crummy was back. Owen O'Donnell isn't back yet. He, like he's a big, he's a massive loss. Um, Danny Sutcliffe played well. So, um, like Dublin are a bit like Galway. They have, probably have a lot of players around the same level, but trying to pick the right 15 and try and get lads, you know, like, you know, you had players in the forwards playing in the backs and that kind of thing. So there is kind of a lot of uh, picking and choosing too. But the one thing I would say about this Galway team, um, like, I, there was a, there was a bit of regression in them yesterday when, when there was a bit of, even on the sideline that, like that, you know, Darren Gleeson was, he was booting a flag into the pitch and, you know, you, you, you like to see that, like, because, um, you know, there will come a time that they really have to, they have to put the shoulder to the wheel, and, and and like we saw that against Limerick last year for a while, and they were so good in the first half. Um, you know, we probably should have won the game, Leinster final last year. So, like, I do think it's small things that this Galway team and Sarah mentioned it. It's momentum. If Galway can get going now, and t- yes, they should be a starting point, and look at like taking games and winning games, and and not be looking at performances. If that makes sense, like, you need to start winning games. Um, and if we win both last the last two games, you could sneak into the league semi final. But I think if we win both games. That's the main thing, you know. At least semi final be great, but it's going into the Leinster Championship and then making sure that we're we're going into the Leinster final, playing well and winning, not going in last year like we did, kind of you know a draw against the Kenny, a draw against Dublin. You're kind of you don't know where you are. Yeah, Dublin next uh, per go in the league uh, March tenth. Just before um, we do finish, sir, um, over the last few weeks I've been I suppose putting together the club management teams um, for 2024 and league's just around the corner it's hard to believe already there's a couple of uh, I suppose maybe surprise uh, updates I suppose Matty Murphy going back into Casagare Tony Ward going to Mullia they're probably the two outstanding ones that a lot of other clubs have stuck with the same management as previous years yeah, I was surprised with Castlegar, to tell you the truth, in the sense I saw their matches last year. I thought they had a very good year. I thought they finished where like to, to finish where they should in the top five. Very good. Like with Matty Murphy, like has a great track track record. It's hard to keep a good man down and it's wasn't he was asked he would look at it as a challenge. Now like, he's a turn of man going into Castlegar. That wouldn't happen 13, 40 years ago. Times have changed. You know, Tony Ward, look at he loves hurling. He's going to be with someone anyway. Uh, it to surprise me that the Mullion management didn't stay on after last year after winning uh, mm. the beat. To, to give it another year now, I know there's the say business commitments or family commitments. That's sort of, I thought it's, I'd say, I'd say a lot of players and we were even surprised because they'd be expecting the boys to stay on or hoping to be staying on. Uh, I don't know who's with Tony Ward. He probably like when he goes into manager, you bring in someone else to trade, but like that happens every few years. It's a big commitment, even at club level now, because the least call you're going to be doing will be two nights a week in the weekend. That's the least to be doing. And the club thing is very, very long compared to the county scene. Like the club thing has started already training and they won't be playing until the. Uh, July August so it's a long 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 campaign like you know and it's 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 getting to be maybe a little bit ridiculous because you'll have strength and conditioning guys doing out programs and like uh, they'll all the boys will follow the programs but it's all cost of money the club thing is getting very expensive as well it's, it's becoming like like a bit of a gravy train but like that's the way it's gone and everyone is looking for the extra inch and that's the way it's going to be but it's interesting all right it'll be interesting with Thomas do I know they'll probably try to persuade Kevin Burke to, or Kevin Kevin um, Burke to yeah, stay on yeah. I don't think we're going to hear Anton from a you couple know? of weeks anyways from there yeah, the, the, <laughs> Like they'll be saying because your your minor thing will be over. Like and like again, he he's done a fantastic job, and he's a wife and a few kids as well. Like you know, it's all it's all it's not just as simple as the hurling thing. But like uh, when it's in you, it's in you. I suppose like and that's the way it is. Like he's still a young man. We just hope he gets on with the minors. I would I would love before we go. I would love to think that our under twenties. It's a long time since we won under twenty, or an hour time since we won under twenty one. It's a long long time since we won. And like it to be about time we shake ourselves up and have a right rap at because uh, we haven't been performing at that level and that's a very important level. It's more important in the sense now that the, the minors under seventeen that's a mile away from senior, but the under twenty 
a mile away. Like and Cork have won the last three. I'm told they're very good. Uh, they're supposed to be good again this year. Like if they win four in a row, if Limerick starts to slip, and you could find they could be the next one to become strong because they're not going away. These guys are hanging around the whole thing because they feel there's something coming. I would love to see us, uh, Fergus Healy and his manager team, you know, getting getting the right strong team together and winning an under twenty. That's important what uh, Sarah touches on there about the under 20 Clark. Massive. I think they played Cork yesterday, if, if I'm uh, correct, before the Cork Water game and uh, Parky Reeve. Yeah, look, it's massive. I think everyone was disappointed with the uh, under 20 last year, like in the Leicester Championship. For once, something we were getting, we were trying it for a long time as games, um, but we didn't win them. Um, so, you know, we, we need to be looking at winning the Leicester under 20 this year. Um, look, as, as Cyril said, you know, we've, we, the minors is you kind of forget the minors until you you, you see them togged out. You know, like they're, they're only young lads. You know, they're only boys. Some of them. Um, so it is massive, and we do have a lot of players at that level. You know, I think, you know, Fitzgibbon and under twenty is the two things that you, you you need to you need to be competing at and hopefully winning to to progress at senior. Um, and when you're looking at the likes of Cork, as Cyril said, three out of the last four. Now, I know that they've lost one of their best hurlers to rugby, but you know we have to be getting back to that. Um, because that's and I think even getting to finals, like if you look at the team from the senior team last year or yesterday, you know a lot of those lads got to a final of under twenty one at the time and mightn't have won it. But if you're getting to a final, you're you're there, you know. So we're getting the games now at under twenty. Now it'd be a pity if we didn't get a few home games to be nice as well because I do think that's something that um you know that Galway should be given. Um, but like we we need to start winning those games at under twenty this year. Um, and and qualifying for for you know big games at that level. If you have three or four wins at under twenty. Um, it, it gives you a, a lot more than to step up to your Walsh Cups the following year. Yeah, they played Cork uh, yesterday. Um, lost two eighteen to one thirteen. Uh, that was the final score in that. Um, they played. That was obviously before the Cork and Waterford game. But uh, that's all we do have time for on today's podcast. Uh, thanks to Sir and Cavrock for coming on this week's podcast.